Hey, it's your boy Max laying out the game plan for you guys and today I want to talk to you about how to become a better blog writer. So this is probably the single most important skill when it comes to blogging. There is a lot to learn, this is a long process, but there are some things that we can do and I'm gonna lay out 5 tips for you today. This can be a lot longer list, this can be like 15, 20, I've even seen like 100, I've even seen like 100 tips for better blogging. This can go on and on, but we have to keep it actionable. That's why I don't like those long lists and I narrowed it down to five of the most important tips that you can actually apply and take action on so that you are better at the end of the day. So, number one, write a lot. Duh, right? I mean, it's kind of obvious, but you will still be surprised by the amount of people that reach out to me, ask me how do I become a better blogger and I open up their blogs and I see like eight articles over there like what are you doing man you you gotta like really get into this because practice makes perfect and there is probably no better way to improve than by actually doing this so take action on this right a lot and i do mean like and i do mean a lot here because for me at least 5000 words a day of writing is not really a lot i've done da days where i write like 10 12000 words per day so that's probably like what you should be aiming for as much as you can. I mean, quantity is not everything, but it is still pretty important and it will teach you quality. That's my approach, at least that's how I approach blogging and I think it's really helpful, especially for beginners. You got, you're also going to build that like confidence. You're going to learn how to produce a lot of work and you will improve over time by just practically doing this and if if you only decide to apply one tip out of all of the like all of the blogging tips in the universe it should be this write a lot write as much as you can and also if you if you're afraid like you're gonna write something really terrible or bad or make like a huge mistake there's always that update button button in the in the wordpress editor and you can edit your post and change your writing whenever you please and whenever you feel like you can improve and speaking of editing and improving that brings us to the point number two, which is you should edit a lot. Now, some of you guys that may have seen like other videos of mine or read some other articles of mine, you may know that I really, really hate editing, but it is crucial. I mean, editing is a lot more intense, a lot more focused process. It requires a lot more attention than writing because, well, writing, you can just like sit down and let your stream of thoughts, your consciousness, like the flow to your fingers to the keyboard like on the wordpress editor and it's there right you just write but editing requires a lot more dedication it's a lot more deliberate more precise process and by just doing that by just focusing intensely on this you actually get better at writing it's almost like in a way uh, when you edit a lot when you're used to editing a lot it even becomes part of your writing it's almost like the sentences you you initially write start to come off somewhat pre-edited, a little bit prepared, and they are ready for, they, they will require less editing over time. Now, there is one kind of intriguing trade-off that I sometimes may recommend to, especially to newer bloggers. This is part of my own personal approach to blogging, what I call dirty blogging, which is you kind of postpone editing for, let's say later, and you, you, your primary aim is to output a lot of content, you will get better at writing, as we said before, and you will save that precious time that usually editing requires a lot of. So, we will talk about dirty blogging in another video. I think it's like a useful concept for new bloggers, but keep in mind that you can actually do this. You can produce pretty good content that's even gonna rank and maybe even it's gonna start getting some results. It, it's not gonna be necessarily like the best written content out there. I mean, obviously, this is not the... You're, you're probably not gonna be like the New York Times when you start writing your first blog post articles. You only wanna focus on getting to good enough. Once you start getting to good enough and you see some initial results and your content starting to rank, it's maybe time to consider editing it a bit. It is more intense, so it will require you getting back and like focusing and it's kind of boring and it sucks. But the, the more you do it, the more your actual initial writing improves. Okay, number three is reading a lot. But not just anything, but mostly reading other successful bloggers. And 
another probably kind of obvious step but i know you guys are not doing this i know this and i know it because well i kind of avoided doing this for a long time myself but it, it is one of the best things you can do to improve your writing and i'm specifically saying successful bloggers because that's how you will learn the best your writing will start to reflect what you've seen even like i believe like unconsciously you will become a better writer just by emulating and imitating what you consume over time and general like literature and the, all the classics and everything they're still good they will provide you like with a lot of useful language and writing tools that they will make a difference in your blogging but probably like Ernest Hemingway wouldn't be able to I mean he would obviously be able to write a successful blog post but that's not the style you should be aiming for there is a certain like language of blogging and we we can't even know what works, what kind of language works. Even the audience kind of expects it. So that's why I recommend reading mostly bloggers, that especially bloggers that are already doing it at a good level. I mean, I will avoid the temptation to recommend my own bloggings here because, well, it's obviously massively subjective. I cannot be realistic about it. But I think that... Uh, the guys from Income School are doing a really good job here. Check out their blogs. I believe like Dirt Bike Planet and Camper Reporter, like some of the blogs they most often mention. And from what I've read there, it's actually pretty solid stuff. I believe it's like a really, really solid example of how you should write for blogging. So check out other successful bloggers. I believe it's the next best, best thing after writing that you can do for your blogging. Now, number four. This is probably the most advanced step when it comes to improving your blogging skills and that's to learn some copywriting and a little goes a long way here and I'm saying this is kind of advanced because well you don't really need this to see some to see in that initial success you can be fine without like ever ever even exploring the concept of copywriting but if you would truly want to get to that elite level where your content actually earns you the most money it can or close to like the maximum and it's optimized for profit and for like everything else you should study at least some copywriting why well there are three main main points in your articles where copywriting is massively useful like you wouldn't believe the difference it can make and those three points are the title of the blog post the hook the intro like the first few paragraphs and the call to action and Pretty much every blog post should have these three things. If if your blog posts don't have them, like go back to them and add them. But when you apply those like key emotion spiking copywriting tactics in your first of all in your title, well, this makes your blog post stand out in the Google search result. And I've often seen happen like to me and to other bloggers, especially uh, even if you're like ranking maybe like number three and there's like more authoritative uh, blog posts outranking you on number one, number two. But if, if you have like the better title, you will get a lot of clicks. You will steal like the clicks from the first two articles that by the, let's say by the nature of the ranking, they should probably get. And you will outperform like the typical number three blog post just by having a, a better title. And that's that's pure magic because... It's just one little sentence that you need to spend some time and some attention to it. You need to have some copywriting skills to, to get some results here. But as I said, a little goes a long way here and you'll be surprised by how much it can get done. And also like the first paragraph is super important because the, that's like obviously the first thing that readers are going to read. It's gonna set the tone for the entire article, but also it's gonna it should provoke some intrigue in your audience, like promise them like what what value they will get if you, if they keep reading. And this is like very important because also Google measured this. This is like an important SEO signal. They they want to see like how long people stick on your page and how much attention do they pay. They they obviously use that information to determine how good the blog post is, and it's a valid point. So. If you if you do a good job in, their, in in those first two single two three paragraphs, you will set the tone right for the entire article. You will set a good frame for your readers, and they will be much more tolerant, and and they will give you like multiple chances, let's say, throughout the article. If you just get that first paragraph right, and the call to action is like something that's inevitable from pretty much all types of content, or at least should be. 
typically you will find that you have two types of call to action in most blog posts. Uh, you either like compel your audience to go and check out the pro product, usually a product that you're an affiliate for and you earn commission by doing that. Or you can like direct them to another one of your articles, which is also like a really big important SEO factor as well. Google measures this. The more pages your, your readers visit, the better it is for your blog in the long term. So at the end of like each blog post, you will probably have some sort of action that you want your readers to take. And this is where copywriting also comes into play. If you manage, if you learn to, to do this like properly, the results are gonna be like massive. So there's like just these three simple places, like a few sentences in your blog post, they're probably the most important of them all. It's really valuable to focus here and make them as good as you can. The, the better you get at this, like the more results you will see with less work. That's what I, what I love about copywriting. Uh, again, I, I think I've mentioned this guy like, in several other videos of mine check out Kyle Milligan on YouTube his channel is I believe like the best when it comes to copywriting even though like he doesn't have I believe like the the number of subscribers and, and attention to his channel as he deserves it he still like I'll put the best stuff on copywriting and obviously copywriting is like a massive skill people spend years maybe decades mastering it you will not get like really good over let's say a few hours of reading but you will still learn like the key principles relatively quickly. I believe like the 80-20 rule often applies in this sort of situations. You, you will get the gist of it and you even just by applying a little bit of what you learned, you will see massive, massive, like disproportionately big results. And that's a big payoff in my book. That's why I recommend like you learn at least some copywriting, especially after you're in that like intermediate phase, maybe you're in, a, in advanced phase, you got a lot of content, some of it is getting good attention, apply some copywriting principles on the title, on the intro, on the hook, and on the call to action and your results will improve. And number five, give yourself some time. This is a long game, give yourself a lot of time actually, because you will not improve in a day, a week, or a month. It will probably take you at least six months. And if you are one of those people that say like, oh, I suck at writing, well, it's maybe gonna take you like a year. So, so give yourself some time, be patient, trust the process. And the reason I'm really like, I really try to emphasize this point is because you will forget this. There will be a point in your timeline where you forget like that you should be patient and keep investing even when when things seem like desperate and frustrating you will forget that this takes time and you will think like oh blogging sucks or this doesn't work or i'm wasting my time any any of those things like i urge you remember this if you truly want to succeed you will have those thoughts eventually you you just gotta keep reminding yourself like this takes a lot of time so you will get better at time, but you got to give it some time. And we already know the process. We already know that blogging works. Otherwise, millions of people wouldn't be doing it like every single day. It brings profits to like God only knows how much people in the world. So read, edit, write, learn copywriting, repeat. Like that's the process. You have the whole game plan laid out for you. You only need to execute on that and give it time. So there you have it, five principles, they're all actionable. Start applying them today, you will see massive improvements pretty quickly in some cases. In other cases, it might take a, long, a longer time, but you will see improvements and your blogging and your profits ultimately will start to rise. I know you like this type of stuff. Hit the like button, it really helps, helps out a lot. And subscribe to this channel because we, we got more coming like probably every single day from this point on. I'll see you in the next video. Done.